Hi guys, it's Barnaby for Spurred On and welcome to Friday's edition of Tottenham Transfer Talk. First up, there is but just one story everywhere doing the rounds. Fox Sports in America picked this up. Harry Kane to Real Madrid. And not just that, they keep bringing up the rehash of Harry Kane to Manchester United as well. What do I think about this? It is just paper talk. Real Madrid have only just installed a new manager. They sack Rafa Benitez, good thinking, too defensive. They bring in Zinedine Zidane. Now for me, Zidane doesn't even cross me as a, a really great manager anyway. I don't know, obviously he may turn out to be, but he's so quiet and shy and it just doesn't strike me that if you're a quiet, shy man, you're gonna motivate the players within the dressing room. Maybe he'll, they'll be motivated by the fact that he's the best player in the world in his day. Maybe they would, I don't know. But do I think Ledley King would make a great manager of Spurs? It would remain to be seen and I think they're both just as legendary as each other within their own dressing rooms. But back to Harry Kane. Is Daniel Levy gonna sell our talisman, the face of our brand, the face of our club at the moment, to Real Madrid or Manchester United? Ask yourself that. Of course he's not. Can you imagine what would happen if he sold Harry Kane right now? There'd be riots back in Tottenham again. The fans would go absolutely mad. They'd call for his head. They wouldn't go to the stadium anymore. It's completely crazy. I keep thinking to myself, what would a club have to bid to turn Daniel Levy's head? And I tell you, the bottom number, the lowest number that they'd have to even starting bid on is 100 million pounds. And that's only because 100 million pounds might make him and the board think, oh, we can put that towards the stadium. But you can't replace a Harry Kane. He's the most talented striker we've got. He's the most talented striker in the country at the moment. And obviously, we've sold players to Real Madrid and Florentino Perez before. So we've got history. But those players, they all angled for a move over two or three years. Gareth Bale was talking about wanting to play abroad three, four years before he went. Luka Modric wasn't sold when he wanted to be sold. He was made to stay a year. Harry Kane isn't angling for a move, he doesn't want to move. He's got his dogs, he's got his house, he's got his girlfriend, his feet are on the floor. He's scoring goals for Spurs, he's scoring goals for England, it's the Euros coming up. This is just January paper talk more than anything else I've ever seen. Doesn't even bear thinking about, and to be honest, I just feel for people in those press newsrooms, just like, oh, we're so bored, we haven't got a story. Oh, Man United and Real Madrid are interested in Harry Kane. Well, of course they are. He's one of the greatest players in the world at the moment. He's up there in the top 10 uh, most expensive players in terms of their worth at the moment in, in that list that came out the other day. Of course they're interested, everyone's interested, but can they get him? No chance. So that's what I say on that. Second bit of news today, slightly calmer, slightly calmer. Andros Townsend apparently is demanding a loan move according to the Telegraph. Of course we brought Andros up a lot. He wants to move, he wants to play in the Euros for England. Good luck to you Andrew, Andros. I think a loan move might suit everyone. If he goes on loan for six months, and he does brilliantly and gets in the Euro squad, pushes his value up, makes him come back to Spurs thinking maybe I can get in the first team again. So I think that would suit everyone. In terms of the chances of that transfer happening, that loan move, four out of five, four out of five. Last one today, this isn't really to do with us, it's to do with Berahino, who once again we're supposedly interested in, but more importantly today, according to the Express, Stoke are looking to break their transfer record in excess of 12 million pounds to buy Berahino. Now the reason I'm talking about this is, I still think we should go for him. I'm not that bothered about the fact that he's angled for a move. That's just what all professionals do. He fell out with Jeremy Peace. He hasn't got back in the team sent, uh, since. I don't think that's necessarily him having an attitude problem, meaning he wouldn't fit in at Spurs. He's been in the England under-21s. Paul Mitchell's obviously been scouting him. Poch likes the look of him. Let's get him in. If Stoke are bidding 12, 12, 13, 14 million pounds, let's bid 15, 16 million pounds. Let's get the kid in. Let's get him playing back with Harry Kane like he did in the England under-21s. Forge a relationship. He can play anywhere in the three behind Harry. He can play up top, up top on his own if he wants. I think he'd be a good signing. Let's not let Stoke get him. Let's not let that happen again like how Birmingham got, uh, how uh, Birmingham's Damari Gray ended up at Leicester when he could have been a Spurs player. Let's push the boat out, let's get him. We've obviously got 20 million to spend because we tried to spend it in August. Let's do it. Okay guys, that's the end of today's Tottenham Transfer Talk. Let me know what you thought of all those issues in the comment section below. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel on YouTube and follow us on Twitter at Spurred On TV. Come on you Spurs in the cup this weekend. Hi guys, it's Barnaby for Spurred On. This is my post-match review after Spurs drew one all at Goodison Park against Everton.